Education and Learning. My name is Juan Sebastian Garcia. I've been working in technology for the past 20 years and I developed a system to train you in a fast, easy way to reach your goals. I've been working in different corporations in the IT department and this gave me the experience and the knowledge to develop the system. Thanks for visiting K and Learning. See you on the next episode. Hello, welcome to K and Learning. My name is Juan Sebastian Garcia, and we are in the Metaverse Fundamentals class. On this episode, we're going to look and understand the details of what the Metaverse ecosystem is. How do they understand the components of the Metaverse world? towards technology, processes, and the architecture behind Metaverse. So when you think about Metaverse, yeah, there's been a concept of Metaverse out there for years, but the present and future of Metaverse, it's what really matters when it comes to integrating, you know, your physical world and also your virtual world world or in other words the virtual converge world that we all know that is going to happen at the very uh point where you know you are making money on your physical world but maybe you're going to be making money in that virtual world with a virtual avatar so this is a really big concept when it comes of virtualization you know, a lot of people after the pandemic, they started working from home. They start probably using their time uh, virtually uh, doing tasks that are, you know, connected from home, like making money, playing around with Bitcoins or, you know, trading with Bitcoins, that kind of stuff. Those are the things that, you know, after the pandemic, a lot of people started to do. Now, that same concept of, you know, having uh, virtual Bitcoins uh, to make payments and so on is going to happen on a virtual converged world and plus your physical world. Uh, and this converts the concept of Metaverse. So Metaverse is a collection of fully connected, interoperable, physically augmented digital worlds. In other words, if you talk about digital world, uh, we are, you know, having a 3D world that you could access and start making things like transactions, maybe buying things or maybe selling things or maybe, you know, making money with bitcoins or other um, types of cryptocurrencies uh, and, T and, and NFTs and so on. So. Basically, a uh, physically augmented digital world uh, with a physical persistence that are converged with virtually augmented physical world in which people and digital representations of people, that means digital people, can fully interact with one another and digital objects or environments, including digital twins, which we're going to discuss later, with full reality. So this is a big concept. Um, a lot of companies started moving towards this concept of metaverse because in the future, in the short term, you're going to have two identities. You're going to have your physical identity and your virtual converged identity, which is the digital you. So think about it in terms of productivity. If you are working eight hours, you know, physically, and you know you start converging into a virtual reality world what if you make money on that virtual reality world you know you could probably spend i don't know seven hours of your physical world and maybe one hour of your virtual converge world and you're going to be making money in that world as well and in the long run what happens is you're going to split your time between your physical world and the virtual reality world. So Metaverse is the converged world of augmented physical world and virtual world that is hyper centralized, 
hyper connected, hyper visualized, hyper interacted, and hyper reality enabled. So metaverse can create an economic values without space, time, resources, uh, limitations. There is no limitations when it comes to a metaverse world, because again, in the physical world, you'll have time, resources, money to spend, space that you probably using and there's limitations on the physical world. on that 3d virtual converge world there's gonna be no limitations because you know think about it. when you played a video game right you use an xbox or a ps5 and you played this awesome 3d video game you have a lot of powers in that video game you have like uh you know there's no rules there's no limitations you could have so think about the virtual reality world that you're going to live in uh, where you could make money, you could have you know people around you, you could buy products, you could sell products, even to the point that you could buy properties and land in that 3D world. And what if you buy a piece of land in that 3D world and eventually you're going to be making money out of renting that land? So it is really a big concept of having metaverse into people's life. You know, the, the reality is that we have the technology. You know, there, there's technology that's always innovated, uh, like, you know, digital lenses, um, wearable devices, uh, digital human into innovations like, you know, Elon Musk is doing the Neuralink where you could just connect so many things into a, a, an AI and your brain directly. Now, things like uh, that we already seen it, you know, every day we're seeing mixed reality in a lot of video games, virtual reality and augmented reality. So think about that digital virtual converged world as two worlds that you're running, your physical and your virtual converged world. And you're going to have a digital you. It's, that's what we call the digital twins. So a lot of things are going to happen. You know, if you start making money in both worlds, you're going to be a happy person. You're going to be somebody that is going to be having maybe better quality of life. So think about that. All right. So thank you and see you in the next episode. Hello, welcome to Key and Learning. My name is Juan Sebastian Garcia, and we are in the Metaverse Fundamentals class. On this episode, we're going to look and understand the details of how to uh, understand and grasp the concept of Metaverse, uh, how this is all happening, the history, and a little bit of details of how to understand it better. So. The metaverse concept is not something new. It started back in 1992 by Neil Stephenson uh, from a novel, Snow Crash, coined the term metaverse for the first time. Uh, the research about metaverse technology uh, showed a long history of metaverse and technology innovations. We've seen it in a lot of movies, by the way. But, uh, you know, Patents and innovations that started back then, they, they revive the metaverse concept. So the, there's a lot of books. Uh, the Keystone of Vanish suggested technological assimilation as a new engine for technological innovations. Uh, creative construction. Uh, so there's like frameworks they started developing towards metaverse. Now, if we consider the integration of broader platforms that we have right now in 2022, like smartphones, 3D devices, computing, XR devices, the digital twin concepts, the cloud computing, which we already have in place in so many markets, the innovation of infrastructure like AI, machine learning, blockchain technologies, Bitcoin, 
Internet of Things, 5G, Wi-Fi networks, they're all together integrated into Metaverse. And that will give you an answer about why Metaverse is happening now. You've seen the technology happening now and it's moving so fast. That is making Metaverse run very fast and assimilate what's going to happen in your life, what's going to happen in people's lives, what's going to happen with the enterprise business world where people are going to have this, you know, virtual reality world embedded into your enterprise and companies are going to make more money. Large corporations are investing a lot of time and money into metaverse. So in the long run, they're going to be making a lot of profits from metaverse as well. Now, there's a lot of things happening because we've seen a lot of good video games, you know, for many years. Video games are getting very powerful, but the company Epic Games, uh, they created a new version of the Unreal Engine and they started making like this virtual reality world and they also acquired uh, a company called Capturing Reality, which it lets you create a whole new world with 3D scans and making things real on a 3D world that is exactly the same like the real world. So I think a lot of companies are investing billions of dollars in transforming your physical world into your virtual reality converged world. So I think that's very important to understand that evolution that is happening right now. All right. So I hope this was informative and see you in the next episode. Hello. Welcome to Canon Learning. My name is Juan Sebastian Garcia, and we are in the Metaverse Fundamentals class. On this episode, we're going to look and understand the details of how to understand Metaverse towards the technology, the people, and the processes, and all the components we need to understand. So, converging the physical and digital world with digital twins, with the mixed reality, and the Metaverse apps, you know, that's going to bring your productivity levels uh, way beyond what we've seen today. In other words, if you're making money on your physical world with your knowledge and your career, what if you duplicate that knowledge and have two worlds making, you know, production of things for your life? So Metaverse apps are the culmination of the intelligent cloud and the intelligent edge working in harmony together at their foundation is digital twins. So digital twins enable you to create rich uh, digital models of anything physical from simple assets or products to complex environments. Once it's modeled and it can be brought to life and synchronized with the physical world using a two-way IoT device internet connection, this will bind the physical and the digital foundation to enable Metaverse apps. So there's going to be a whole new world of Metaverse apps that we could discuss later, but just looking at the foundations of technology, this is how Microsoft Metaverse uh, created their own Metaverse technology stack. So think about it in terms of, you know, not only cloud services, not only cloud infrastructure, cloud is just like the basic layer. You're going to have additional layers on top of your cloud that is going to enable that connection, the binding between the physical world and the digital world. And also, you know, the intelligent cloud is going to bring all those good features for the digital world. So in the Metaverse, uh, Microsoft Metaverse technology stack, we have things like the Microsoft Mesh and HoloLenses, where we have our mixed or virtual reality lens 
uh, uh, glasses to make your, you know, play a game maybe or maybe get into that digital world in a very comfortable way with your HoloLens. Maybe you could develop apps with Microsoft Power Platform that are going to be integrated to that digital world. Or maybe you're going to have the Microsoft Azure cognitive services like the Microsoft Azure AI, an autonomous system, making intelligent algorithms for that digital world. Now, you also have Azure Analytics uh, for, you know, getting vi visualized of predictive analytics and machine learning and maybe pulling out statistics that we need to understand. Now, also the Azure Maps connecting to all the maps and GPSs. Azure Digital Twins is going to be a service for Microsoft that it will connect your physical world with your uh, converged digital world. You're going to have the Azure IoT connections. And that opens up a very important thing that you need to understand. So physically, you're using physical things. But with the Internet of Things, that is pretty much a physical device that you're going to have at home or in your enterprise. IoT devices are millions out there. But bottom line is that IoT device is going to be connected to your digital world. Not only connected to your cloud, it's going to be connected to your digital world, to your digital converge world. And it's going to be connected maybe for doing things. You know, there's IoT devices for maybe, you know, checking temperature, che checking prices, or maybe checking uh, changes in the environment. Or maybe there's IoT devices just to count things. So those are the things that are going to be connected to that digital world. And that's going to make sense when you start making transactions of money or bitcoins over that IoT device. Now, in the bottom, we have the physical world. So think about it. Uh, the technology stack from Metaverse from Microsoft is like having, uh, you know, different layers. But the main layer is the cloud. You're going to have the Azure cloud enabling all these things. But on top of that, you're going to have a lot of good services for your digital twins and your digital converged world. So very important. Now, there's many cases that we could learn every day from Metaverse. You know, there was a case from Nissan. They have a user case where they created a, you know, uh, architecture where they have people involved in this architecture where we enable digital twins for these people. In other words, if you buy a car, They'll give you uh, a permission and access to your digital twin. And then in your digital twin, you could access certain level of services from Nizen. So, you know, maybe a, a, an avatar world of 3D of Metaverse of Nizen, maybe giving you training, maybe giving you service, maybe giving you advices. Uh, maybe the augmented reality avatar world where you could pretty much be on your physical world, but in your glasses, you're going to be seeing things additionally that will help you out on your physical world. There's the augmented reality concept that brings with Metaverse. Now, maybe you could drive together with your avatar and your physical self the same car. How cool would that be? So people joining through the Metaverse appear as 3D avatar avatars, in the real world through mixed reality, letting people in both worlds share the experience of space and movement in real time. A family member or friend from anywhere in the world can join the vehicle as an avatar to accompany uh, of the journey of the metaverse. The avatar world occupied a seating position to give a sense to where they actually in the vehicle. In needed driving instruction of guidance, pro driver for Metaverse could join the drive as an avatar and as assist in real time. In other words, there's always going to be this connection between, you know, your your physical world and your digital world in a mixed reality. And this is where focus uh, Nissan was focused to bring to your end customer 
So they'll have a better experience. They'll have a better service. They'll have maybe a better assistance. So think about it in terms of customer service. How good and awesome would be to have these additional tools like a digital twin for customer service. Now, digital twin, what is a digital twin? It is a digital representation of the physical world, including vehicles, buildings, infrastructure uh, that is created in real time through massive amount of data collected through IoT and sensing technology. Now, it is linked to virtual spaces and the real world, The digital twins can be utilized to share information and support augmented and mixed reality interfaces in the real world. So Nizen is a really good example of what's going to happen on every enterprise business. If you're a large corporation running an enterprise business like Nizen, maybe you have, I don't know, 800,000 employees all over the world, and you start bringing this metaverse world to your own company internally for your internal clients that will help out for the internal force you know but also what if you bring those this metaverse world to your external clients well that's going to bring more sales and profits to your business because things are going to be more easy to handle thanks to that mixed reality world so it's a simple example I hope this was informative and see you on the next episode. Hello, welcome to King Learn. My name is Juan Sebastian Garcia, and we are in the Metaverse Fundamentals class. On this episode, we're going to look and understand the details of how to understand the monetization of things within the metaverse and how this is going to revolutionize the world towards money in the short term and long term. So basically, we already know the basics of the metaverse, the architecture, the components. But when it comes to money making on metaverse, it opens up a whole new world of ideas. Like I said, you're going to be living in the future in a virtual reality world where you could pretty much buy a piece of land on that 3D world and then eventually sell it or maybe sell products on that land. And then you're going to be making money on different ways. Now, the most common way that we know nowadays is making money with cryptocurrency. So we have uh, cryptocurrency like Bitcoin Binance, from Binance and so on. But There's going to be new things that are going to make you money. Uh, decentralized computing platforms, when, when they created Ethereum, they created this new way of making money on a decentralized computing platform. Is what we call uh, the app. So think about it in terms of, you know, having not only cryptocurrency, maybe the app, to make you uh, have... Uh, Ethereum uh, as a you know way of making money through a lot of connections like the blockchain network and also you know having a connection with the apps to making goods and transactions on the metaverse world that you're getting into. So the app, your trusted platform to discover and analyze thousands of ranked apps built on Ethereum, EOS, Steam, Tron, Tomochain, IOST, Blockstack. We know through that many people find the blockchain and decentralized technology to be mystifying and overwhelming. But the D app is just happening where you're going to have may, may making transactions via the apps on Ethereum. Now, we also have the concept of decentralized finance, DeFi. It's an emerging financial technology based on secure distributed ledgers similar to those used with cryptocurrencies. The system removes the control of banks and institutions, have a money, financial products, and financial services that are centralized. In other words, similar to cryptocurrencies, 
with uh, the centralized finances, you could have technologies that you're making transactions, maybe you're making payments or you're receiving money without the control of a centralized institution. Now, the NFTs are unique cryptographic tokens that exist on the blockchain network and cannot be replicated. The NFTs can be used to represent real world items like artwork, real estate, tokenizing, uh, real world tangible assets uh, that are bought or sold, traded for more efficiency while reducing probability of fraud. And let me explain this again. When we live in a metaverse world, let's say you already have, you enter a metaverse 3D world and you have your digital twin already. You're going to be walking, playing, uh, navigating in that world. And maybe you already have a couple of cryptocurrencies. Maybe you have a couple of bitcoins and maybe you, you'll be able to buy a couple of NFTs. And then with that virtual money, you could buy, uh, like I said, a piece of real estate in that world. And then with time, that piece of land, that piece of 3D virtual land that you bought is going to be doing things for you. It's going to be maybe you're going to have renting that space or maybe you're going to have products in that space selling, right? So NFTs is going to be the way that they're going to pay you tokens to receive that benefit. In other words, and it is made for artwork or pieces of real estate uh, that are legit. In other words, it has uh, similar to a blockchain. It has a lot of ways to uh, define that is, is, is anti-fraud. Nobody could just like steal your hash and, you know, fake that money. It was very secure. It was designed to be secure. So NFTs are used to represent real work items on your 3D avatar digital twin world where you could pretty much buy a piece of artwork. Uh, someone uh, used to say, hey, we could just buy JPEGs via F NFTs. And then with time, that JPEG is going to just be more expensive and then you can resell it via NFTs on the metaverse world, right? So a lot of things are going to happen in that metaverse world. There's going to be a lot of art involved that people are going to sell on a 3D world of metaverse. There's going to be like walking on a piece of building or real estate building that is on 3d on that metaverse world and people are going to buy that building and then eventually sell it or maybe they could you know start selling products and transactions on that land and all this is anti-fraud it has a method of tokenizing and you people are going to be buying selling and eventually you could just you know be in that metaverse world receiving money and making money with all these new currencies that we are discussing here. So it is very important to start grasping all these concepts, uh, things like the app, decentralized finance, DeFi, NTFSs, uh, cryptocurrencies. Those are the things we're already preparing ourselves for this new digital twin world that we're going to live in. All right, so thank you and see you on the next episode. Hello, welcome to Key and Learning. My name is Juan Sebastian Garcia, and we are in the Metaverse Fundamentals class. On this episode, we're going to look and understand the details of what the digital twins is how to understand for metaverse the concepts of digital twins. So there's different types of digital twins. That'll be the first step to understanding how this works. So uh, think about on terms of, you know, I'm a physical self, but then I enable a metaverse my digital self, right? So the digital twin types that we have regards one is a product, could be a digital twin, right? 
a production process uh, is a digital twin uh, for a production process, a model for production process. Uh, digital twins also work for organizations or enterprise. So let's understand this a little better. So a product digital twin is created when a new product is designed. In other words, um, in Metaverse, we're going to have new products. We're going to have lots of new products that are not really physical. They're just digital products uh, regarding digital twins. A product digital twins is created when the new product is designed. So the product digital twin enables the functionality validation of the new product. Now, the second thing is the production process of that digital twin is a virtual model of the production process. The production process of the digital twin can be used to predict the behavior and to optimize the performance of the production process. Now, a digital reality, it, I'm a human, right? I have a digital self as well. I'm a digital human. So the digital reality of a human is called a digital human. I have a digital reality when I enter a 3D game, when I enter a, a metaverse uh, world. So I, I can't be created by a 3D avatar integrated with artificial intelligence. Now, this is a big concept because digital twins is a common word that we're going to hear a lot of times with the metaverse. Now, a digital twin of an organization or an enterprise business uh, developed by Garner is a realistic digital representation of any organization's operation of its business model. In other words, like I explained earlier, the Nissan example, they created a digital twin of Nissan as a large corporation, having a realistic digital representation of the organization and the operation of the business model. Like I said, in Nissan, they were able to bring the digital twin a digital self, but also bringing new services via digital twins, right? They were able to bring maybe better customer service assistant and, and so many other things, you know, and experience that they're gathering. So the digital twin types are important. So number one, we have a product, product digital twin. We have a, a digital production process and we have a digital twin for an organization. Now, there's different digital twin models. Let's talk about those. So, a digital twin is usually consisting of software models that mimic a real-world system. A digital twin model takes input data from the real-world system, simulates how the process will behave using those inputs, and then produces predictive data about how the system will perform. The software models inside digital twins might be different from each other, depending on the type of twin you're using, the specific user case, uh, and the required level of detail. So there's three levels of digital twin models. The first one is analytic digital twin models. It uses all types of advanced data analytics, including descriptive analytics, predictive analytics, prescriptive analytics, and decision-making can be performed based on the results of the analytics models. Uh, now, the second digital twin model is the simulation model. So the simulation digital, digital twin model uses a simulation model to improve decision making. Simulation digital twins models can be enabled asking the what if questions. What if this, what if that? Uh, those questions to test various conditions and scenarios that are impractical to create in real life. In other words, the simulation will tell you, hey, if something goes wrong, this is what's going to happen. So if it goes right, this is what's going to happen. Uh, simulations are great. So the digital simulation twin model is very great before uh, testing a technology uh, or during the testing phase as well. Now, the artificial intelligence digital twin model are using artificial intelligence technologies to leverage real-time data, generation of insights into a deeper understanding of operating environments, 
AI digital twin models can correct and process data, detect, predict, analyze, optimize, and make decisions dynamically based on the data. So again, this really connects to artificial intelligence and machine learning. Because what happens is, if I have an AI digital twin model, and I'm applying that model to something, maybe to a product or to a person or to an enterprise, I'm already applying AI, and this could go deeper understanding with machine learning to say, hey, thanks to this data that we gathered for the past five years, we could predict that uh, this digital twin model, this is going to happen like this or like that. Those are the things that digital twin start enable for you and your business. It is very concept. Uh, that is important and is, is not easy to grasp, but, um, you know, having this uh, knowledge of understanding these three models, you will start, you know, ha having an idea of where this is going. Digital twins are usually consist of software models that mimic the real world. That's it. That's a digital twin right there. It's a world, a real world emulation or a real world analytic system or a real world AI system. So I hope this was informative and see you on the next episode.